You're listening to the Christian Indie Artists and Songwriters Podcast, the place where faith, music, and life intersect. We exist to help Christian indie artists and songwriters just like you get songs heard. All right, I'm here with my friend Hannah coming to us live from Indiana tonight. How are you doing, Hannah? I'm doing great. How are you, Brian? Doing pretty awesome. We just pretty recently connected because your new song, Crown, came out, and i Uh, I heard it and immediately added it to my playlist because I think it's awesome. So now I'm glad to kind of hear the story behind that and just the whole story behind your music journey up to that. So with that in mind, like, where did you kind of get started with music? Where did it all begin for you? Wow. Well, I mean, if you ask my mother, it was as soon as I could, you know, sway back and forth watching Barney on TV. (laughs) I'd sing along and (laughs) dance along. But really, it, it... I'd say getting involved with music stemmed from how active I was in my church, in my home parish. You know, I loved to sing just growing up, loved to sing. And I wanted to be the next American Idol, you know, (laughs) I just really did. It was it was so ingrained in me, uh, the, the performance aspect and the heart of singing. I just knew I wanted to do it. And so as soon as I had the chance to get involved with anything music, you know, the first opportunity was through my church. So I started to sing and um, lead people in song through my church. And, but, but I'd say really my music journey blossomed when I entered high school. Mm -hmm. I had a really difficult freshman year. I was just dealing with a lot of things like dealing with some bullying and dealing with the loss of friends and et cetera. Like it was just really hard to kind of move on into high school from, from middle Mm. school. And I really was lonely. (laughs) Mm. I was really lonely. And so in school I would write poems in my classroom. So like, you know, I I would not really be paying attention in chemistry or (laughs) in biology, but I would be scrolling on my notebook, writing poems about the inner depths of how I felt Hmm. and what was going on, my, my fears, my hurts. And it was through writing poetry that I was finally able to find a little bit of clarity, (laughs) find a little bit of peace. But it was when I'd come home at night and plunk out chords on the piano at, you know, 12, 13 years old, that I started to songwrite. And, and, and when it, and when I started diving into songwriting, that was what made me come alive in music. You know, I I could sing all these other songs all day long, but like the emotion that came from the songs that were buried in my heart, that is what made me really open up and crave music. I love that term you just said, buried in my heart. That sounds like an awesome album title right there. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I totally can relate to that, you know, because you, you listen to songs and that's inspiring and that's what kind of gets you to maybe love music. But then when you can, you know, and not that everyone gets there, but, you know, once you start to create it yourself, you're like, whoa, this is something different. And you can express yourself in a way that is only specific to music. I mean, there's no other way. Like, I mean, poetry, yes, you know, art, I guess I'm, I'm geeking out about music in, in general, but I just feel like it's such a unique. Go when ahead. You, yeah, yeah. Geek out. <laughs> when, when you blend the, the power of the emotional response of music and then you blend like the truth of the words and especially in our context of God's truths, like it's just a superpower, you know? So mm-hmm. to, to find that at such a young age is amazing. So taking that in mind, like you started, you had all these pages of notes that are basically like, you know, getting you through, you know, and, and inspiring you. So when did you start to think about maybe sharing those songs? And in what way did you do that? So both my parents were in the medical field, you know, mm-hmm. as I was growing up. So the idea of making music a career was really difficult for me to wrap my head around. Um, yeah. And being the oldest, I had a responsibility to be a role model <laughs> for my siblings <laughs> and for maybe people around me. Um, I just I just felt pressure to succeed, to do something yeah. that I knew would make money and make people proud. <laughs> mm, yeah. So I think, you know, actually making my music come to life had always been a dream of mine. 
and didn't really present itself in an opportunity until later. Um, so let's see, I was writing songs at 12 and 13 years old and kept writing songs, 14, 15. Um, I came across an opportunity to where I was starting to get developed as a young artist, um, mm. found some really cool people in Nashville that were open to working with young um, uh, you know, aspiring artists. And yeah. I had mentioned my dreams to my parents and they have always been super supportive. You know, that was, that's a blessing that sometimes I need to just re remember to really <laughs> ha appreciate that I had, I had a support system. You know, my parents never pressured me to do anything that I didn't really want to do, if that makes sense. I mean, they, yeah. they definitely taught me what hard work ethic is. And I think that is incredibly important for anybody who's pursuing music or has a desire to do music because you have to be great. You know, you can't, you can't just be so, so like you have to be really great at what you do. You have to know your craft. You have to be, um, it just has to be so obvious that when you open your mouth to sing your song that you've sang it a million times. Hmm. And sure. they have to feel that emotion coming from you. And that can only happen when you are extremely vulnerable. So uh, <laughs> anyhow, going yeah. back to, to answering your question, I, I was about you know, 15, 16, 17 when I actually started making some trips to Nashville. And aside from being a full-time student at high school and <laughs> being involved with every musical club, theater, show choir, et cetera, possible, I was kind of, I don't want to say live, living a double life, but I, I didn't really tell people that I was going to Nashville and pers working with a um, contemporary radio style vocal coach just to, to get prepared for what I really wanted after mm. high school. Yeah. So you're basically going to almost like a dual enrollment, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it felt like. I mean, I would wake up ridiculously early and get to bed pretty late <laughs> every day. But you know, like you said, like that's what you got to do because mm -hmm. you can't, if you really want it or you feel like you're, you're made to do it, like it's going to take sacrifice. It's not just going to happen. Unfortunately, you know, I feel like a lot of people like myself included feel like you're going to be playing guitar or whatever in your room one day. And then the A&R is going to walk by and you're the person you've always wanted. You know, it's like, that's not reality. The reality is you're going to work like, like crazy person for mm -hmm. a long time and maybe get a shot someday, you know, like, right. like the, I think the, the difference is that you don't actually care if you get it or not, because you're going to do it anyways. That's of right. course you're intentional, you're targeted, but even if you don't get it, you're still going to do it because it's who you are. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's a big difference. So I did see that you started winning some contests along the way. So when did that kind of happen? Because obviously your songwriting and, and the things you were doing started paying off. And I don't want to skip too far in your story, but I know that I saw that kind of stuff on your site. So I wanted <laughs> to bring that up because that's definitely a part of the journey, right? It is definitely a part of the journey. So uh, I had first for anybody who's, you know, heard or knows a little bit of my backstory. I, I always mention that I felt God's pull for me to do Christian music after I had decided that I was going to go to Indiana University, the Jacobs School of Music, and pursue vocal performance. I had a scholarship, and I had worked really, really hard to get that scholarship. I studied classically most of my life, and therefore, that's hint the, the double life where I felt like in high school, I was learning how to do both. I was training uh, at 7 a.m. how to do classical opera, operatic senior pieces in high wow. school, but also, um, you know, at night in the evenings training how to sing radio, radio ready contemporary styles. And so it was just, and, and building that voice was ridiculously hard. Yeah. Probably <laughs> um, very different too, right? Very different. It's, it's, it's the opposite world, completely wow. opposite world, but that's what I really wanted. And so I felt when God, I mean, I, I, I distinctly remember God pretty much just telling me I had gotten off of a, an important phone call and I just sat down wherever I was. <laughs> and, and I was thinking, wow, okay, God is telling me, he's like, don't go, don't go. Mm. And 
I knew he meant don't go to college. Hmm. So, and, and that was, that was a huge, a huge leap of faith. I ended up listening to him because I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, I have no idea how this is going to happen. I have no idea the plans that you have for me, but I trust that they are good. Mm. You know, I will be courageous and I will know that you are with me wherever I go. And I had to tell my parents that I wasn't going to college. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, it was shortly after that where when I had gone down to Nashville, um, you know, like I had mentioned, you know, 16, 17, I was working on a project. Well, it was when the project was finished. I had it was my first EP called "All the Way" that "All the Way" ended up winning uh, the gospel category for the John Lennon songwriting contest in 2000. I think 14. It was when I had. I had it was the oh, 2015. I had um, the year after I graduated from high school, and the year that I said no, I wasn't going to college, wow. and um, so and then I ended up continuing to go on to become a Lennon Award winner, and that wow. song just just really changed my life. It opened up some amazing doors and, you know, and, and since then I've just, I've just never stopped. I've pursued this calling and, you know, you talk about how so many people believe that, you know, I'm going to be sitting in my room playing guitar and then an A&R person is going to come yep. ask me to be, you know, the ne- the next big thing. Well, it's <laughs> by having the mindset of, There is always going to be someone better than you. Hmm. You just have to work harder than them. You 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 need to put in more hours than they do because like they're they because that's the truth. Like and and the and the the other thing you mentioned earlier I loved was that you have to get to a point where you just don't care because you're gonna do it anyway. And you know A and R people label people. They know the difference between somebody that is green, per se, you know, somebody that's inexperienced or somebody who is seeking that deep approval versus somebody who's got thick skin, has heard no multiple times, doesn't care. And that's much more attractive, (laughs) if that makes sense. Totally. I mean, that's something that, you know, my wife and I talk about a lot and, you know, it I actually have one of one of our episodes called grit and I feel like that is the thing that's like the difference maker cuz and mm. I honestly the first time I heard that term was um a few years ago at the global leadership summit uh Will Smith had a quote and he's like just like what you just said like there's a bunch of people in the room will, will out act me will be better looking than me will be more talented than me but I will outwork everyone in the room and of course there's a balance in that, especially in our context of, you know, trying to follow God through this thing, because God doesn't call us to work ourselves to death. You know, mm-hmm. in fact, he calls us to rest and actually take a breath and enjoy it, which is difficult. I know it's difficult for me because I'm always thinking like, well, how am I supposed to answer God's calling if I'm just sitting around? Like, mm-hmm. I think working, even if it sounds mechanical, like like scheduling rest, scheduling to do nothing is is important. But with that said, like, there's going to be a lot of nights where no one's there's no audience and no one cares, but you're in there working, you're putting the time in. God sees it, you know. So like, I totally agree and and respect and, and understand what you mean in that. So that's cool too because one of our one of our guests early, my my friend Russ Parrish, he also won uh, the Lennon Award back. I don't know what year though. It may not have been the same year as you because I know Ben Rector won that. So that's a very like high regarded thing. So congratulations in the past for that. That's awesome. And and I mean, I know that that must have made a big difference. So, so, you know, taking that, did that, once you finished that album, you, you got the award, did you start like booking shows or start touring or what, what did you, where did it go from there? Yeah. So I knew I really wanted to move to Nashville at some point. I was in no rush because a lot of um, people who had been mentoring me mentioned that, you know, Nashville is not a town you just want to move to when you're young and, you know, inexperienced and, you know, get, get some life under your belt, you know, make, get some connections under your belt before you move there. And, and at least that was the advice given to me. So I ended up staying in my hometown for a couple of years and, and I toured, I create, I booked shows on my own. You know, obviously I had the help of, of some incredible people, um, like Jasmine rule from higher level agency. You know, he's, he's incredible. 
Uh, and he really helped teach me how to book, like how, what it means to book and how to approach that, how to create contracts, how to do everything independently, because it was all on me. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it was, I, I mean, God provided and it was like you, like you said, I had to, well, I had to work. I had to work. It was, um, I, I mean, I just remember busting my butt because I knew someday I wanted to move to Nashville and, you know, mommy and daddy were not going to pay for that. I was going to pay for that. (laughs) And so, you know, I, cause at, at that point, you know, I just knew what I wanted. And so I was working like two to three different jobs, plus focusing on my music for, for two years. So I, Mm -hmm. I would wake up, I was a barista, loved that job. Um, (laughs) coffee is an obsession of mine, but yeah, (laughs) yeah, nothing like waking up at 4am. So I'd work, uh, I'd, I'd do the morning shift, 4 a.m. to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Then I'd go, I'd, I'd go clean houses. I'd go babysit. I would do anything that I could to make money to save because I knew what I wanted. My goal was I wanted to be able to move to Nashville and not have to work a job while I lived there because I wanted to spend all of my time while I was living there focusing on building relationships, making connections with people, working on music, getting in the studio, everything that I dreamed of. So, so that's what I did. I worked my butt off for two years. I, I practiced, um, got a lot better at guitar, um, worked on my voice, started writing more and more songs, um, and pract- you know, ha- got a band together and, and toured, wow. you know, experienced what a life, a little bit of tour life, not massive stadium life, but you know, it was, it was something that I was proud of and something that really thickened my skin had a lot of experiences. You just grow a lot, you know, from, from something like that. But then I, I kept praying fervently about God's pull, about what he desired for my life. And I remember one summer, I, I felt God say, okay, you know what? You're ready to move to Nashville. <laughs> and uh, I was like, okay, God, well, um, there's a couple things you need to do. If this is the case, then I pretty much... I do remember this. This is crazy. And I've never actually shared this before. I was praying about, you know, uh, finding a place to live in <laughs> for Nashville. And yeah. I, I was on the very last day, like it was a deadline and I had no place to live. And I needed to tell my boss that I was going to quit my barista job. I needed to tell everybody I was getting ready to move. I needed to pack. I needed to do everything. And I, I, I said to God, I'm like, okay, Lord, I am not testing you here, okay? But <laughs> if this is what you want for me, which I believe it is, you have to provide me with a place to stay today. <laughs> <laughs> and within 45 minutes, I got the message from the roommates that I lived with for two years. And then I, I moved to Nashville. And it was the well, another huge leap of faith that God showed up in. You know, so that's... That's amazing. And that's, you know, God just does that. Sometimes he makes us wait right till the last second or the last 45th minute or whatever, but, <laughs> but he still comes through because he's always faithful. So, so once you got there, you know, is, obviously so many people wonder like what that's like, they've never taken the, the jump to do that. So how did that Nashville experience, because you did get to bring in how to book your own tour, you did get to bring in the hours of preparation and, and rehearsal and all of that stuff to it. So what was that experience like? when you actually made the jump and was it everything has pros and cons, right? But like what, what was your experience once you actually made that leap of faith? It was an incredible time of what I would say is learning a lot about myself. Hmm. I got to explore, you know, it was a time of that of tested faith. You know, um, I grew up in a small town and I moved to a big city and that type of experience will change you. I don't, I think that, you know, it was, it was hard. It was hard. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was hard, but it was exciting and exhilarating at the same time, because it's almost like those streets, you walk on the street and there's, there's hope and there's promise and there's happening things all the time. Right. Um, And you never know, like if, if somebody you meet would be that right person to just make your dreams come true. And I loved the, the, the thrill of the city. I loved the uh, specific culture as well. The hodgepodge of just so many, I don't think I really met very many 
Tennessee natives <laughs> while yeah. I was living in town. Everybody was from somewhere. And mm-hmm. so it, it was an incredible place to to learn about not only yourself, but the world for a young 20 something year old, you know, just to experience life. You know, I didn't go to college. So that was me being literally thrown into the world versus yeah. most people's experiences kind of like what I, at least this is my envision of it is you kind of have like a little helping guide by you go to college and it's kind of like real life, but it's kind of not because you're in school full time. And, but like I was, I skipped that and I went straight into the real world. (laughs) And, you know, it was the first time I was ever away from my family. And it was the first time I was away from my long time boyfriend, now husband. Hmm. Um, And it was, I was lonely. You know, I was lonely, but at the same time, it was in my loneliness that I found my voice, that I spent countless hours up at night playing guitar, much to my roommate's chagrin. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it was, it was in the, I, I always look back fondly, although that was very, a very hard time. I look back fondly on that, on, on those couple years, because it was, the time that I really refined who I am. And that's all about what my last project was about. It's called Who I Am. And it was me rediscovering who God saw me as and me actually finally believing it because I didn't believe it until I moved to Nashville. And that is something I'm so thankful for is it it gave me more of a spine than I ever thought I could, I could have. Wow, that's so good. And yeah, I, I love the, you know, the authenticity in that. So thanks for sharing that because, you know, people might say like, oh, I, I went to Nashville and it was the greatest thing ever. And that was it, you know, but the reality is like, if you're in the 615, it doesn't mean like it's not regular life. Like you're still struggling. And, and like you said too, especially you kind of stepped away from everything that was familiar to you to, to chase after this thing that God brought you there too. And like, I think that's the thing is like a lot of people, myself included, like, we think, okay, all we got to do is get to that room or get to that opportunity, and then we're set. But really, once you finally get there, because you will get there if you work hard enough, you know, and God's it's mm-hmm. in God's plan. But like, you're basically in a room, then you're going to be working towards the next room. Like, it's never ending, you know. So mm-hmm. it's not like you've never. I don't feel like anyone's ever arrived. Even the people that are like the biggest pop writers in the world, they're still yeah. trying to get the next thing. So there's there's no stopping to it. So. I'm sure you gained a ton of, you know, uh, experience. And so like, what, what kind of things did you take with you? And obviously you wrote about it, but then it brought you back, you know, to your hometown where you're, you are now. What did you do with all the experiences? I know there's probably a lot to that, you know, but especially like maybe connections you made with songwriters or producers. Cause I know that like you just released a brand new song that sounds amazing. So it's probably, you know, all of that worked into the, the Nashville experience. So like, where did you go from Nashville into kind of to now? So my husband and I are actually from the Fort Wayne area, if anybody knows in Indiana much, but so we are actually not living in our hometown, but in okay. um, Indianapolis. So we're still kind of like in the middle. <laughs> That's yeah, where, yeah. I mean, technically not really the middle, but to me, it feels more like a middle. So what happened was, I actually in Nashville, I through through all like the self doubt and growing thicker skin and getting better at my craft and meeting new people. Um, I started just taking that leap of faith and I started releasing singles and, you know, from, from my last project. And it was through releasing these singles um, consistently that I got the attention of an indie label. And so then I, it just was a, a total God thing, you know, cause I had, I had had other label meetings and like, guys, whoever's listening, you will be told no. Mm. And when you get told no, you have a choice. You have a choice to believe all the lies and to think you're not good enough and to give up or you take it, you deal with it and you pick yourself back up and you move on. <laughs> and, it, and you know, it's, it's just so important to, lean into what God's opinion is for you and what his calling is upon your life. Because all of these label people and all of these A&R people and all of these, you know, industry people, they are all going to have different opinions about who you are. Mm -hmm. And they're all going to say that that you should be doing this. You should be doing this. And everybody's going to have different thoughts upon that. 
But truly, you know, you got to follow your heart, you got to follow your gut, and you got to follow what is good. I think mm-hmm. that is also something that a lot of young artists maybe struggle with the temptation of creating content that is in or creating content that is you know, maybe mediocre, but like easy and, you know, no, create something that is good. You know, God Mm. looked at the world after creating it and said, this is good. And then he rested. We are called to create beautiful things. I mean, I think that's why we are just so restless in nature as creatives. I don't know if you uh, agree with me, Brian, but (laughs) I am restless. I am never satisfied. I will never be satisfied. And I've accepted that. (laughs) (laughs) I have accepted that, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy because, you know, so crown actually came in second place in 2019 before the song actually released. It came out and I had submitted it for the international songwriting competition and it came in second place last year for the gospel category. And I was immediately like super excited about it, super happy about it. But then I got hungry again. Boom. Mm. Just like that. Just like what you had mentioned before. And I, I just think that, you know, if we keep chasing other people, what other people to make other people happy instead of God, we will be so empty inside. Mm. But at least when we are fulfilling God's duty and we are like God's calling on our life and we are avidly asking him about that and, and you know, p- being in communion with him, it is so much more joyful to create And there, you know, although we may not ever be full, you know, it it is the closest thing to full that we will ever experience until we get to heaven. Wow. I talked to my friend Aaron Hoskins this morning about similar things. Like at the end of the day, it all comes down to being with God because that's how we figure out what he wants us to do and how we're uniquely purposed. And like you said, it's so good. Like everyone has their own opinion. And at the end of the day too, I think, I think something that people miss is that a record label has a roster and they need, it's like a cast for a movie. Like they Mm -hmm. need to have specific roles filled. Mm. So it's not that you're bad or not good enough. You could be the best person ever, but if you don't fit the cast that they currently need, then it's going to be a no, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't reflect. So I love that you said that, like just take it in stride let your skin get a little thicker because then you can handle the next no a little bit better when you get that first no or that hundredth no. You're pretty good at taking no's when you get the hundredth no. And I feel like the further you go, the more no's you get. But then you work towards the yeses that mean more because you can't just get a yes right away or else it, it doesn't mean anything. You know, like you have to experience. And I, I've noticed that too, especially in songwriting, like for whatever reason, the more pain and suffering and things I've experienced in life, Mm. The more I have to say in music, you know, yeah. like when I was younger, I'd write songs about nothing because I had nothing to say, you know, so yes. like, and I feel like I'm, that's what I'm hearing from you too. Like you had to go through those seasons of loneliness, whether it was in um, middle school or in Nashville, whatever. And, you know, we all go through it all the time, but like, mm-hmm. that's what gives you something to, with teeth in it, as Ross King would say, you need to have wow. something with teeth if it's going to make, make people see like, yeah, I feel that way too. So that comes through the song. So that that's cool. So with, with Crown now, uh, you're working with a label, so are they uh, like an independent label? So are they helping out with production stuff? Or are you doing that, or what is the process? Because you know, again, I love to nerd out about this stuff. So how did like <laughs> the, how did it go from like the song that was unreleased on the this the contest to now being out just a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. So so actually, going back back to my story. Sorry, rewind. Yeah, so yeah. <clears throat> um, I it, you know me just taking a leap of faith and trusting in God. And putting out my own singles, having no idea how they were going to do. And it caught the indie label's attention. And so I finished out the the 2019 through the label. It helped land some bigger Spotify editorial playlists. And, you know, they, it just kind of gave me more of a platform to, to launch my music. And then at the top of 2020, the, the label kind of disbanded. So okay. it kind of went back into this and that was right that was right before the pandemic as well. So it yeah. was literally like boom, another season of oh yeah. um you know Didn't we're gonna turn around. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, okay God, what season are we entering now? <laughs> <laughs> like a soap opera or something. But it really um, is. And and so you know but but the cool thing is is that I find where there is peace, there is usually Jesus. 
And so like when that news had hit because <clears throat> things had started to really start to snowball, you know, my music was starting to get out more and there were a lot more opportunities. I was starting to get on tour at bigger, do bigger events like NCYC here in Indianapolis, which was like 26,000 kids in, an, in Lucas Oil Stadium. And like, that was like oh. a dream, you know, the dream, yeah. the dream come true. And then boom, COVID. And it's like, whoa, mm. okay. <laughs> but it was in that season that I was able to finish out this new album that I'm working on and it, and to be reminded like, okay, wow, you know, this is the heart of everything. These, these emotions, these raw emotions, you know, the, the point of the, to really re ground myself. And, mm -hmm. but you know, something that you had asked the question, you know, what, what did Nashville give you? It gave me a, a greater sense of what I'm fighting for. Mm. And it was after I got married that, and, and moved to Indianapolis. So um, got married, moved back to Indianapolis and, or back to the Indiana area <clears throat> that I complete, my heart settled. Like I mentioned earlier there, I, I'm super restless, but in Nashville, I was like hyper crazy, like crazy. I, I don't know. I just was so focused on the world. Mm-hmm that when I got married, my heart relaxed because I found my person, you know, like I was finally with my person. I was no longer doing long distance. And, um, you know, he, God knows what you need. And it was then I really just set into this, not only identity of who I, who I was, you know, who I am, that, that, that album, that project, but really is like, okay, now that I've accepted this, what do I have to say? What do I want to say? And the first song off of this next album that I wanted to talk about was my surrender song. I had never written a surrender song and I wanted people to, I wanted to show people my vulnerable side. I usually end up writing some great songs when I'm angry. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> the last project, so some of them I, I wrote when I was angry and I also wrote Crown when I was angry a little. Um, mm. I just, I had this feeling with crown. So crown came about when I, I had this concept, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Man, it's so hard to be a Christian sometimes. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's so hard to love people the way Christ does sometimes. And it really just came out of this self-righteous pride. Mm. And when I went into the writer's room with uh, Nick Schwarz, I don't know if you ever know who, who Nick is, is. You've been mentioning a couple other awesome yeah. incredible writers. I'd throw him out there. Um, you know, I just told him my concept and he, he was like, you know, what if, what if we turn this around? What if we make this more of a surrender song instead of like, you know, heavy as the head, heavy as the head that like my crown, we, what if we make it here, Lord, you can have my, you can have my crown because mm. every, all of us, all of us carry this, this crown of pride, right? Yeah. We all do. Or, or just honestly are, what, all the things that we love about our lives, all these things that we love about being an individual instead of completely being overtaken by the Holy Spirit or like completely coming into communion with the Lord. You know, we, we like to stay individual in this world, but, mm. you know, we are called to be Christ-like. We are called to, um, to imitate Christ, right? So therefore we must lay down our own pride and and come to him man and uh yeah i mean the kingdom it's not the king of god it's the kingdom of god there's a king to the kingdom but there's a body of of christ so it's not about just us and our own individuality of course that's important because mm -hmm. that's what makes us unique we all have our own roles but ultimately i mean when god created man he said he didn't want to be alone and then he created woman because it's not good for him to be alone so obviously we're not really meant to be alone so <laughs> I love the aspect of the community. I mean, that's what literally the basis of this entire podcast is to hopefully build that community as far as we can, you know. So so that is that is encouraging for me to hear. So with that, like what what's I always like to ask people like what's a piece of advice that you'd give to your younger self, maybe middle school or whatever season it is that you would think, I know there's probably a ton of things, you know, but what's a piece of advice you give to your younger self that would just encourage you along your journey and then anyone else who's listening? I would tell my younger self that you are a priceless treasure. I would tell my younger self 
to surround yourself by people that are going to push you in faith, holy people that are seeking the kingdom, and to continue to read books that are going to help you grow, whether it's spiritually, whether it's in business, you know, to always be a student and to have to grow in humility. That's what I would tell my younger self. That's so good. So you mentioned you're working on an album. So, you know, I, I love it. I'm going to put all the stuff in the description below for sure how to connect <laughs> with you. you. But, but what's the best way for people to connect with you? And then what's some stuff you've got coming up so that people can follow along on that journey? Awesome. Well, uh, so Crown just released. Um, I'd say follow me on Instagram or Facebook. So you can, I mean, the handles and stuff will probably be wherever you need them to be. But yeah. I've got a website, hannahschafermusic.com. You can check out everything. I'd say, you know, feel free to check out all my music on any platform there where you're listening to music it's there exciting news is that i have this is the first time i've ever announced this so awesome. uh this is i'm going to be releasing a new song this month so in march <laughs> awesome yep. and um other than that just stay tuned guys because there's 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 an album on the horizon that's exciting and you know it's always it's I mean, we all know releasing singles is, is a great way to drip out content and keep it fresh. But at the same day, at the same time, like we all love to get to dive into an album. So that's exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely excited to hear it and dive into it when it comes out. Before we go, I'd love to pray over you and your ministry. Uh, and I feel like God is always in these talks. So I'm excited to pray. So God, thank you so much for, for Hannah. Thank you so much for her stick to and her ability to continue to roll with whatever life gives her God, because she is aware, acutely aware that you are in control and you are guiding every step of the journey. Even if sometimes it might not be where we think we might end up, God, and seasons change, your love remains. Just like that awesome song from a United Pursuit says, God. So we mm -hmm. thank you so much for your your uh, continued pouring out of creativity and strength and encouragement to Hannah as she continues on this path, God, in this new season with this new music out there that's all in result of the many seasons and things that she's she's faced and gone through, God, we know that it's going to encourage so many, God. So we're just excited to see all that you're going to accomplish through it, Lord. We thank you for her and her awesome family and uh, their they're just obedience to go wherever you need them to be, God, because they know that you're faithful, Lord. So thank you so much for being faithful to all of us. And just pray that um, they stay safe and happy and have the best uh, music musical years ahead, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We want to help reach as many Christian indie artists and songwriters as possible. And one way we can do that is with your help. So if you could take a minute and leave us a review on iTunes, that would be so appreciated. This is how the iTunes algorithm will push this content out to more and more Christian indie artists and songwriters. So like I said, if you could just take a couple seconds, leave us a review, that would be so awesome. It means so much to us and we would really appreciate it.